I kind of get hot tired of hearing about like big booty bitches and, and, and cars and champagne and it gets boring. It gets so, so boring. Like, I don't want to hear, I don't care about your chain. Do you know what I'm saying? And how many chicks you got, man. What else you got going on? Can't really sum it up in, in, in one word. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't all bad, if you see what I'm saying. Like my mum, she tried, my daddy tried as well, but I don't know if it was the error, I don't know what it was, but it was quite shitty to be honest, if I'm honest. Growing up, it was so rocky and noisy and constantly like no stability that all I used to do was just go in my room, shut my door and put my music on and that always it just used to drown everything out anything that was going on outside of my room like my room that was my kingdom anything else that was going on outside of that I couldn't even hear it once I got in there and put my music on my dad used to be like really into music <clears throat> that's why when I got into music my mum was kind of like for like for years for years my mum didn't even really listen to my music to be quite honest I don't think they really believed in me. I know that sounds a bit wrong. Like my mum will probably watch this and be like, why are you saying that? But I just want to be honest. And my dad was really into music. Like my dad could play like the electric guitar, the guitar, the piano. He was a dancer. He had hundreds of trophies that he had won for dancing. Anyone who knows reggae, they'll know an artist called Sanchez. And my dad used to like dance and like open up for him and that. But somewhere along the way, I think it started when he went to Germany. He tried drugs, man. And then from that, through my whole childhood and my whole life, my dad was just in and out of rehab, in and out of mental homes. So it was quite rocky. But my relationship with my dad's quite strange compared to the one with my mum, because my mum was more there as in stability wise, but music wise, that was me and my dad. Like, I shared that with him. He was pretty much into it. I mean, one time, um, this was a long time ago, my video on Orthodox Daughter, it came on in the mental home that he was in. And he was sitting in the TV room. And he started going like really crazy, obviously because his daughter's on TV, like he ain't seen me for ages. And the next time he's seen me, like I'm on the big screen. And they came in there, they thought that he was hallucinating and that. So they juiced him up. So I remember having to go down there when my auntie told me, I remember having to go down there because of that and kick up a stink. So things were always quite rocky and I was more worried. It, it kind of came like I was the adult, you know, when it come to my father. Not that he wasn't an adult, but you know, I'm taking care of him kind of thing where it's kind of meant to be the other way around. But it helped me immensely in my music and my growth and like how to express myself because music, it was my only outlet. I didn't have no other outlet, so I put it all into my music. Like I've got my degree in that, like I've left music alone, I've gone and I've studied and I've worked and I've done this and I've done that. But I always come back to music because it's the only thing that I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like I was born to do it. I think that with I think with the whole rape situation, I'm just going to say it because it's true life at the end of the day and I don't care what anybody thinks of me because it weren't my fault. But I feel like the reason I had to let people know that is I feel like there's a lot of people that suffer in life and they go through certain things and they're scared to even tell one person, you know? So I feel like it will help people as well. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm too strong for that. It makes me feel weird sometimes, to be quite honest, if people are too sympathetic with me because I'm not used to that. But I feel like, I mean, I get a hell of a lot of messages. I get people messaging me. I don't know, obviously, they look at me as like a strong female, so I get people messaging me saying, oh, I'm homeless, or like young kids, I'm being bullied at school, what shall I do? Girls that are being abused, their boyfriends are beating them up and that. And I just needed them to know, do you know what, yeah? 
as artists, we go through that too. Because I think sometimes they see you in a certain light where you don't have problems like them, kind of thing. So, I mean, when that happened, I was quite a tomboy, you know? When I was younger, I was quite a tomboy. I wasn't into dolls, I wasn't into none of that. Like, I was into climbing trees and walking on train tracks and that and stuff like that. Like, so, you know, I was around boys quite a bit. And that was like a whole crazy uproar because the person that actually done it to me was my cousin's friend. And he was supposed to be taking care of me. So I think not a lot of people in my family knew either because my mum, and I feel really bad for that, but my mum heard the song and she called me up and she was like, what's going on? Like, is this true? Like, what's, what's happening? And my sister called me as well. And I was like, yeah, but you... I felt really bad for it because that, that I put it out on my music before I really put it to, to, to anybody else. But coming of age now, it just gets to the point where, where you're young and people don't really, they, they haven't been looking out for me then. You get to a point when you get older where it's like, I'm my own boss. I don't want people to start caring now, you know? I've come of age now, it's a bit too late for that kind of thing. Because a lot of my music, I went back to the drawing board because I'd recorded quite a bit of a st stuff and then I heard it and I was like, I don't like this. This sounds like the old, the old Nole. Like you, you need to show some growth now. And like when I did Netflix and Pills, I was a bit scared to put it out at first. Like I'd written it, I recorded it, and then listening back to it, I was like, I'm not going to put this out. And it wasn't even going to see the light of day, to be quite honest. And then one day I just said, forget it, man. I'm putting it out. I don't care what anybody thinks. So I just feel like people needed something different and they needed to hear something different from me. They, in this scene, they kind of, they keep going on about you're a female, but then they want you to be ashamed of it kind of thing when you start to, you know, like embrace it. I've come obviously to an age where I like makeup, I like doing my hair, I like getting my nails done. I'm still a female at the end of the day, do you see what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, well, Nole's got really sexual on us and everything. And it's like, oh, give me, give me a break. I'm a woman. What, you don't want me to embrace my femininity. Like, I think that there is quite a bit of um, stress on females because sometimes you, you don't know how to be. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, if you're too submissive, people take the mick you know, and if you're too hard, she's not being feminine enough. So I just try to just be myself and be who I am. I listen to a lot of alternative music, like 100 Waters and... Yeah, I love them. And Foo Fighters and I'm really into my rock, a lot to be quite honest. Um, the thing, what it was with Cass is it was so refreshing for me to hear that because, you know, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but I feel like it's getting boring. You know, maybe it's because I'm an artist in the scene, so I'm constantly surrounded by it. So maybe that's why it's getting boring for me. But a lot of the rap that I listen to and a lot of the spitters that I listen to are 90s rappers. Big L, Big Pun, Biggie Smalls, Tupac, you know, Bob D. I like a lot of the Queensbridge rappers and that. I just feel like rap these days is missing its substance. So they're honestly, without meaning to offend anyone, in the UK right now, that isn't really, I can't say that I've got them on my MP3 and I'm listening to them, because I'm not. <laughs> a lot of spitters haven't lived that life. So if we touch down on that for a minute, you know? It's hard to believe some of these rappers as well. So I feel like they haven't really lived that life. And some rappers, what they do best is they do best talking about swag, you know? Being that swagged out rapper. Or one rapper might be a bit quirky or that's what they do best, like, that's their thing.
but I, I, can't, I kind of get tired of hearing about big booty bitches and, and, and cars and champagne and it gets boring. It gets so, so boring. I don't want to hear, I don't care about your chain. Do you know what I'm saying? And how many chicks you got, man. What else you got going on? Because to be quite honest, anyone can get a bit of money and live that lifestyle. Show me something different. Because right now, you're jarring me. <laughs> and that's it, really. And I just feel like, with Cass, it's completely unique and authentic and somewhere else. It's taking it somewhere else. And that's what I want to see from more artists. I was quite baffled, to be quite honest. Like, I, I saw him um, at the block I went down there for the Cass is Dead show. He come up to me and I was like, oh, hi, and I started talking to him that, but I've worked with him before. I mean, Jamal shot the last thing we did and it made it, like we took Grime to like Vogue America, which was a big, 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 big thing for me. But then um, we kind of came apart kind of thing, like wasn't really communicating like that. And then he saw me and then he, after that, he DM'd me and he said, I'd like you to come down to my office because there's something really serious that I want to talk to you about. And I had no idea. I, I had no idea. I just thought he was going to say to me, like, let's do a show or something, which we are doing as well. But um, when I got there, he was just like, I want to work on all your imagery now. Like, and I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, but not just your imagery. Like, I want to collaborate with you on a number of things. Like, I want to work closely with you. So like on all your videos, your imagery, your artwork, your, your photo, like your shoots, everything. And I was just like, I was baffled because I mean, he's got Rihanna and people like that were, were walking around wearing his clothes, like Rihanna, Wiz Khalifa, Azealia Banks. Like for me, that's massive because I'm like his protege. <laughs> I've got something coming called Grime Guts and Glory. The grind part is obviously where I started. The guts, You've, you have to have guts in this scene. It's quite a male dominated scene. You know, I've kind of fought for my spot and then there's the glory, which is gonna come, I feel personally, after dropping this project and working with him and everything else that's gonna come with it. So yeah, the um, EP that I'm working on him with is called Grime Guts and Glory. We've, um, we had a meeting the other day, we're planning out the videos and everything's going to start happening into 2016, which I'm really looking forward to. When my mum and dad had a party, they'd be like, come on boy, you play. I'm like, why me? Because you know a lot of different music. So I could play sort of what was new and fresh at the time and I could also play what they loved because I knew they would love that record from Charlie Pride or that record from Kenny Rogers or that record from Susie Quattro. I mean, the list goes on.